Now, one of the assessment methods uh, that I'm very familiar with is the SPICE process assessment method. Now, SPICE stands for Software Process Improvement and Capability Determination. It, uh, just as a matter of history, it used to be called uh, Capability Evaluation. However, another working group in the ISO community said, hang on a bit, um, evaluation is, is uh, a test of things. So you're not evaluating it at all, you're um, doing something else. So they considered, well, what we're actually doing is determining the capability level. Uh, however, that didn't fit the acronym. So they retained the acronym and just uh, changed which letter they emphasized in it. So a SPICE assessment is a, um, an assessment by experts against a, a particular uh, process reference model to determine the uh, capability level of the organization. Uh, the, uh, the concept of capability levels and maturity levels uh, originated, um, I think it originated with Phil Crosby in the quality uh, arena. The whole concept of um, staged growth models, it was called, um, came from the business community and I think the earliest one uh, that I've been able to track down uh, was developed or, or proposed in 1956. And it was based on the observation that organizations changed the focus of their efforts uh, as they grew and mature. Um, and this is reasonable, uh, but the phenomena has been, occur has, has been observed in a lot of other places and in um, software development we, we uh, do see the same kind of uh, general staged growth. Now I have a, quite a discussion on uh, capability models in another uh, lecture, so I won't uh, repeat it all here. It's sufficient to say that the SPICE assessment model does uh, use a stage growth model as its uh, measurement scale and uh, will determine that, uh, will try to determine what capability you are. Now, it assumes that all, all, all work of interest is uh, performed in processes because it assesses the processes and as long as something can be expressed in a process then it can be assessed. Now that each process has to be expressed in terms of what the purpose of the process is and what outcomes you would see if that purpose was being achieved. So you have uh, a general purpose of the process and it might be for example to um, uh, develop the architecture of a, a system uh, if that was expressed reasonably well, it would be to develop an architecture so that the uh, stakeholders and the developers could uh, could determine whether the required functionality uh, would be implementable in that system. So that would be the purpose, uh, but in shorthand, we would say, okay, you develop an architecture. And the outcomes are, in, in many ways, uh, observations of the world, indicators of the world. If this was being uh, achieved, what would the world look like? Well, it, this you'd see this, you'd see that, you'd see something else. Among other things, you'd see an actual architecture being produced. Now, there are, um, as I said, the, the different levels of capability, and there are um, different outcomes for each each level. So that you get, um, I think, in the end, for any one process, you get something like about uh, forty or fifty. Uh, different outcomes that can be satisfied uh, before you reach level five. Uh, the process assessment, the whole point of the process assessment is to determine the current level of capability. Uh, that's its primary purpose. Its primary purpose is not to identify faults and it's not to identify improvements. Those can come out as observations or can be based on, um, well, here's what capability level is, it should be something else, and therefore you need to do these things. Uh, but the primary purpose of a SPICE assessment is to determine the capability level of each process. Well, this is all based on the assumption that um, the quality of the product is, uh, or reflects the quality of the, the yeah, the quality of the processes used to create the product. So if there are faults 
in the product, you probably find there's, there's faults in the processes you used to create the product. And so the whole idea is to go back and fix the processes, this is, as opposed to trying to fix the person who, who built the thing. Uh, it's not very, not very um, functional to do that. Uh, I did say before that each process was um, re needed to be expressed in terms of an outcome, of uh, a process purpose and outcomes. Uh, each outcome uh, has to be ob objectively observable. So uh, it can be either uh, the production of some artifact, so you can say, well, it either exists, in which case the outcome is satisfied, or it doesn't exist, in which case it's not. Or it can be uh, a significant change of state of something. Now, what I've been finding uh, more recently is that um, this is not quite possible for some processes to, to express all of the outcomes in terms of the existence of something or uh, a change of state or something. There are some of them that require some sort of qualitative judgment. Each uh, process um, normally would have between four and ten outcomes at the, the basic level. So um, I think the, the worst case is 20. Uh, there is a project management process with about 20 outcomes, which is clearly over the top. And the least I've seen, I think, is three. I don't know that there, there is any process with uh, currently with two outcomes, but uh, three is the least I know of. Most of them, though, have um, four to eight outcomes. Now, in this uh, whole thing, we're talking about processes, and what what is needed and what we usually have is a process reference model. Now, a process reference model is a collection of processes uh, given in fairly general terms, applicable to the entire domain, uh, that is used for reference purposes. That is, you're expected to take this collection of processes and interpret them or situate them in your own organization. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is tackle them. Now, that's fine. But the assessment will take that process reference model and will assess your organization based on that reference model. So there's room for a certain amount of interpretation during the assessment. Um, so that's a process reference model. There are uh, reference models for, uh, obviously, for software development. You have two of the main ones that are ISO 12207 and ISO 15288. I've seen a process reference model for uh, supply chain management, that's the, that's the uh, SCORE model, uh, supply chain operations reference model, I think it's called, SCORE. I think it's a very good one. There's a process reference model for um, COVID, for control objectives in IT, and there's a few other process reference models about the place, um, of different, different varieties. The um, yeah. For each process reference model, there needs to be a process assessment model. It's difficult to do an assessment without a process assessment model. The job of the assessment model is to uh, say what kind of evidence would be expected uh, for that process. You know, Take the reference model and then add to it what kind of evidence you would expect to see in order to determine whether these, the uh, requirements, whether the uh, capability requirements had been met, whether the outcomes had been met. So that's a process reference, a process assessment model. Um, now, a comparison of the size of these things, um, the ISO 12207 process reference model is, I think, about 40 pages. So 40 or 50 pages. The process assessment model is 212 pages. So there's a great deal more detail there. The assessments themselves. The process assessment, the whole job of process assessment is to de determine the capability level. And we're not talking about the current performance. Now let's distinguish between performance and capability. 
capability is what you are capable of doing at some time in the future in some different circumstances. So a spice assessment is a, uh, a determination of the capability of an organization. The, the general idea is that um, a spice assessment or a CMMI assessment, they're very similar, would be used to assess whether an organization is capable of fulfilling a contract. So it's a prediction of the future, uh, future um, cap capability, I guess. Uh, uh, it was developed initially uh, at the, the, by it was developed initially by uh, the Software Engineering Institute of Carnegie Mellon University. They won the contract that was given by the uh, U.S. Air Force to find a means of assessing potential suppliers of military software to the Air Force. Uh, it's then since been taken up by quite a number of, um, of uh, U.S. government departments and uh, spread throughout the world. The CMMI assessment was very popular at some at one point. And uh, the whole concept of a capability maturity model has proven remarkably uh, popular also, so it's done there. Uh, as I mentioned previously, I think in uh, uh, the series on uh, ISO 9001, uh, a SPICE assessment can be performed at different levels of rigour. Um, the highest level of rigor is normally reserved for um, contractual circumstances. So if uh, an assessment is done to determine whether an organization is capable of fulfilling a contract, you do normally use the highest level of rigor there uh, because there's you know, quite a lot of money rides on it. The lower levels of rigor are used when um, the assessment is done mostly for information purposes. So if an organization wants to know how good they are, uh, just for internal purposes, they can use a lesser level of rigor. And if somebody wants to know roughly uh, what's their state of progress, then uh, there's a the, uh, least rigorous method, which is essentially uh, one person just going around and checking things off. So that's uh, a SPICE assessment. Um, you could read the same thing for a CMMI assessment. Um, this is an introduction. It's not intended to pretend that that's all there is to, to uh, know about um, uh, process assessments. Because believe me, I've been working in this, this uh, field for um, maybe 20 years. Uh, I sit on the committee that develops uh, the SPICE process assessment uh, models, methods, and measurement scales. I'm the editor of one of the standards in there. So I could talk for quite a long time about process assessment models. However, I won't. This is merely an introduction uh, to, to uh, show you that in terms of uh, audits and assessments, here is a, a particular variety of assessments. Okay? See you next time.